Hi, this is Dr. Von Hansen from Washburn University, here to talk to you about this year's KMEA Snare Audition. The first thing I always recommend is get this version. There are two versions. There's a red version, which is just the solos, and then there's this blue version that is the complete study guide, and there is text within these that talks about each one. If you haven't bought the book yet, go get the blue one. If you already have the red one, that's not a problem. This video will get you through all of the issues. The first thing that we want to pay attention to is this moderato and maestoso. We need to really think about what that means. Moderato, we can kind of translate because moderate, so it's kind of a moderate tempo. But the maestoso has more to do with the feel, which is kind of this like majestic and some weight. And that's throughout this whole piece, whether it is forte or piano, it needs to have this majestic uh, imperial quality, like you know what you're doing, you're here, you are in control of the snare drum. So I'm going to talk about a few ways to get that across as we go through here, and then some small technical things on some of the more difficult pieces here. So to get this maestoso feel, what I do is when I'm playing, I'm putting a little bit more weight into the forte sections, which means I'm going to break the first rule that I teach people, which is you should use just wrists. But now we get to make musical choices if we've gotten to the point where we control the wrists quite well. If you want to get this maestoso character, I start moving from the elbow a little bit. I'm still moving my wrists, but I get a little bit of extra weight out of my elbows. That looks like this on the first few bars. So now we need to think about that in the piano dynamics. To me, what that means is articulation and energy. So we need to make sure everything we play is still heard very well and that it doesn't sag in our energy or our tempo. I still want to have the dun, 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 even when I'm soft. Dun, 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 dun. So for me, when I'm soft, I'm actually thinking even more aggressive. To have the stick respond more to me, to be more articulate, I'm adding a little bit of back finger. I'm not squeezing all the way down in the front. I'm not squeezing so hard that I'm, you know, squeezing water out of the stick. But I just, instead of this moving stick in the back, I'm going to have my back fingers in there because now it responds to my small motions a little bit more. So I'm going to move my wrist in the same way, but I'm going to change where I hold the stick. So here's the front of my hand. So see how the stick is floppy? And now as I add my back fingers, you can see how the stick really responds. You have to be careful to not squeeze too much though, because then you start to get some buzzes on the snare. So on the second line, we have an SFZ, which is a sforzando, which means forced. And what this means is you just kind of emphasize the front of that. It's not a forte piano. It does not go It goes We want to maintain a forte dynamic for a little bit. So to get that width at the start, I accent my first two hands instead of just my right hand. I accent the first two. So you get this ba da 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 At the end of that second line, you need to be really careful with this dotted 16th, 32nd after the triplet. It's really going to make you want to play a first and third triplet. Triplet, triplet one. Triplet, triplet one. But it needs to be triplet one, a two. Triplet da 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 We need to go into a group of four there. We have this four stroke rough on the third line which is where we have the three grace notes and then the accent. It's called a four stroke riff because we go one, two, three, four. The fourth is accented. And so it can be difficult at first if you haven't done many roughs to get this worked up. So I'm going to give you an exercise to build up to. Just almost a twitch. So what I do is I play one, rest, rest, four po, let one, rest, rest. I'm going to do an accelerando. Um, I would advise you to do it with a metronome, kick the metronome up, keep kicking it up until you have 
this to a place that you're comfortable, but I'll do just a little cello rondo with this exercise. That's about the tempo that we need for a four stroke rough. At this tempo, we have time to play those four strokes pretty open. I want to make sure that I hear all three grace notes on this line three and then also on line 10 when we have that four stroke rough. So they don't need to be the fastest that you can play them. All right, I'm actually going to play them a little bit more open. So I want to hear to get a guy. On the next line, line four, we have our fortissimo with accents. So this needs to be with our weight, but it also needs to have a little bit of snap. We need to make the drum have that, have that little bit of snap where we can hear the snares really popping back. So I'm, I'm putting a little bit of extra speed into my stroke so I get that real snap off of the head. And also for rhythmic integrity and so that the volume is the same, I play everything but the last beat with my right hand. Be careful here on line four that we, when we're going from these accented fortissimo notes to the mezzo forte, that we actually go to mezzo forte and not piano. So we don't want to go down too far. So I play anything mezzo piano or below in the front edge of my drum, and I play anything mezzo forte and above in the center. So I'm going to stay in the center, I'm just going to use my stick height to get that down. At the end of measure five and the start of measure six, we want to make sure that we're putting that on the fourth sixteenth note. One e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a one e and a two. E. You can think about that as one and two and a three. One and two and three. And at the end of line five, I do thirty second note rolls throughout the whole thing. So if I was to play the last measure of line five without playing my buzzes, if you want to just hear my roll bass. That's what I'm playing. Dot, diggy diggy dot, diggy diggy dot, diggy 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 dot, diggy 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 dot. And then I just squeeze the buzz. 30 second note bass seems to have the right amount of energy here, and it also gets me into my right hand where I want it to be. On the next line, line six, we want to make sure that we have a difference between our five stroke rough and our roll. So I don't want to buzz that rough. I don't want it to be. I want it to sound rudimental. I'm actually playing a five stroke roll. Right, right, left, left, right. For that five stroke rough. And I'm trying to play it as open as I can and then make sure that my roll is nice and tight and grindy so I hear that there is definitely five notes in there. We have a forte piano here now. At the top we had the sforzando which does not suddenly get soft but this does need to suddenly get soft so I'm not going to accent both of my first hands. I'm just going to accent the right and I'm going to play my right hand in the center of the drum and I'm going to play my left hand at the top. So if I go slow so we have that snap at the front but then I can get really soft right away by having my left hand in the front and then we're just going to crescendo by moving to the center. I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite to get down to the pianissimo. I'm going to move from the center to the edge at the end of this line. When we get to line seven, there is not an accent or a forte piano on these mezzo fortes, so don't put an accent on the front of them. The morindo here, if you read in the guide that he says, he tells you, it means you're basically fading out, you're going to nothing, but that's not a retardando. It's actually just a dynamic thing. The grand pause this is a rest 
but it is in time. So you need to count one and two and three and four and, and make sure you keep your time very steady there and not just stop counting. One more tricky bar here is this bar 10. So we have our four stroke rough, we have a single, we have a buzz, and then we have our five stroke open uh, double stroke roll, and then we have a forte piano roll. It's about all of the techniques that happen in this whole exercise in one bar. So that takes a little bit of practice, but I want to hear a differentiation in each one of those. So I want my four stroke rough to be pretty open, and then I want to make sure that my buzzes stay pretty tight. That way when I get to the five stroke rough, I can really open up. And then use that forte piano front edge. Snare drum is exciting when we play all of the dynamics and we play this maestoso feel and we maintain that feel throughout there. We also need to make sure on this one that we keep a really consistent tempo. There are no retardandos, there are no accelerandos. It needs to stay consistent all the way through all of the rests and all of our time. Hopefully these techniques will help you out preparing this. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at vaughn.hansen at washburn.edu. Thank you.